All right. Well, friends, welcome back to the podcast. You are going to just be so tickled with my guest today. So today I'm talking with Jamie Kern Lima. So you guys know her because she started It Cosmetics in her living room. We're going to talk to her all about this and grew the company into the largest luxury makeup brand in the country. She then sold that to L'Oreal in a billion with a B, let's say that again, billion dollar deal and became the first female CEO of a brand in the industry. Um, I just want to start talking to her. Let me keep reading. Her love of customers and her fabulous authenticity has eventually landed her on the Forbes America's richest self-made women list. Jamie, do you know you're on that list? <laughs> I know you do. I, I actually hid it for some, for a couple of years, which is a crazy story. But you yeah, hid it? Oh, yeah, I can't wait. I couldn't I can't wait even to talk process to it. <laughs> uh, but she's also the mother of two and an active investor, speaker, and thought leader who is passionate about inspiring and elevating women. And that's why you're going to love her. So Jamie, welcome to our podcast. Uh, I am so grateful to be here. Thank you so much. I, I look forward should, to this. We should have done this at your home, in, which I believe is in LA, right? Because yeah. you've got sunny California. If you guys are watching Jamie and I on YouTube right now, because we will have this on YouTube, um, you can see the gorgeous sunshine behind her, which which is very contradictory to my foot of snow that's outside of my window here in Kansas City. But I think if I lived close to you, we would be fast friends. So oh, we're glad. I love we are it. so glad that you're here. Okay, so I was kind of telling you before we started that I know the women in my audience are going to love this conversation because we've got a lot of women who are at home, who've got a kiddo on a hip, who are trying to start a makeup line or start a skincare line. I have several women I coach every month. We have women who um, like do love to do things with bath bombs and making mm. soaps and all those things. So I know that they're going to love your story. So tell me how, how did you actually start a cosmetic line? Like, what does that yeah. look like? Yeah. Um, I love this. I hope I am of service to them to into your whole community in this time. So thank you for, for sharing. And thank you also, Jennifer, I just want to say this off the top. Thank you for having me. And thank you for mm. sharing this big moment of my book launch with me too. Yes, I'm super I can't grateful. wait to talk and about that. Yeah. I feel like, tell me if you, if you feel this way that, you know, I know you coach thousands of women uh, in their their businesses and their dreams and everything else. And I feel like we share so many, no matter if they're going into beauty or to any other space, mm -hmm. it's like these fundamentals of how to launch a dream and go after your dream and overcome self-doubt and yeah. like how to handle the rejection and the resilience, like how to have the resiliency to get past yeah. it. Um, I feel like we all kind of have those, those things in common and, um, and, you know, Thanks for asking me how I started it, this yeah. business. Cause I love the idea of getting down to like the granular. Yes. Um, Cause when you Google my story, all you see is like, Oh, Denny's waitress built a billion dollar company. But exactly. Like, you know, just that makes people feel alone in their own journey when they're dealing with the setbacks or the hard times. And so mm -hmm. for me, how I started it, um, I, I wasn't planning to. So it was honestly I call it my knowing or a God moment for me, but yeah. I, I thought I was in my dream job. I was working as a journalist and, uh, you know, since the time I was a little girl, I used to, you know, watch Oprah and want to share yeah. other people's stories. Uh -huh. Like, I really just want to ask you questions right now is my, like, <laughs> about your story. Like that's what I, my, my tendency, my love, but so I was working as that in my career and I thought I was new that forever. And I went through this big season of uh, what I thought was a setback in my life. And, and that came in the form of rosacea. So I have a skin condition called rosacea, which is uh, bright red. For me, it gets uh, really inflamed in the form of like big bumps and my cheeks feel like sandpaper a lot. Yes. And um, when this started happening, I was working uh, as a news anchor and I started, you know, so I went to dermatologists and learned there's no cure and I would try all the, the, the things that they had yeah. and none of them would work. And so I started going through like this big season of self-doubt, um, that I thought, that I thought was a setback in my life. So I yeah. would be anchoring the news live and, and I would hear from my producer in my earpiece. Um, there's something on your face. There's something on your face. You need to, you need to wipe it off. You need, and I'd be live and they were just trying to help me, but I knew, Oh, yeah. there's nothing I can wipe off. This is the makeup breaking up and the the redness coming through. So I kind of went through this, what started as a season of self-doubt where I would think things like, you know, am I going to get fired? Are our viewers going to change the right. channel? Like all those things. And I started spending money on trying to find a product that worked. Yeah. Uh, so I went to the drugstores, the department stores, the pro makeup artist lines. And I had um, a big realization that like, wow my whole life, all the ads I've seen on TV, you just see flawless skin. And mm -hmm. now I don't have flawless skin and, and I can't find anything that works. And I bet there's a whole lot of other women out there that 
you know, maybe feel the same way. Um, And so it was this kind of like entrepreneurial moment, I guess, of like, oh, if I can figure out, which by the way, Jennifer, I had no money, no connections, no idea of anyone in the beauty. Starting at zero. Yeah. Starting at zero. And but I, I got this knowing, right? For me, it's how I hear my faith. It's how I hear God is like, I get this kind of knowing this like internal, still small voice or nudge. And absolutely. I, right. And I just yeah, felt like I'm supposed to do this. And this does not make sense in my head, mm-hmm. <laughs> but, right. and I can easily talk myself out of it. I thought I was in my dream job, but it was like, oh, I just have this, this knowing. Um, and so I decided uh, to listen to that. And I think, um, one of the things I talk about in my book a lot is that sometimes knowing when to let go of a dream is as important as knowing when to go after one. Yeah. And so I, this is the not romantic part, uh, but on my honeymoon flight to South Africa in 2007, wrote the business plan, uh, to it cosmetics <laughs> with my husband, we both got back, we quit our jobs and we dove all in. Oh and gosh. for anyone in your community listening right now, who maybe was in the same spot, I just thought Jennifer, like, Oh, if I pour every penny I have into creating a product that works, it's just going to sell. <laughs> and then I realized I didn't know what I didn't know. Yeah. And it would it turned into three years from the time we launched our business in our living room. It turned into three years of no's from every single retailer that I love, like wow. that I put on a pedestal. So Sephora, Ulta, QVC, the department stores, yes. three years of no after no after no after no. Um, it would be three years before we could f- afford to pay ourselves. And in those early years, and maybe a lot of people in your community can relate to this. Like yeah. these, this is stuff you don't see on social media from, from people, right? But like in nice. our journey, it was like, oh, it was hard. We couldn't afford to pay ourselves. We had to figure out how to do all the things that we didn't know how to do because we couldn't afford to hire anybody. Um, and yeah. so the, the start of, of launching this dream was really tough. And it was filled with rejection after rejection after rejection. And I had to keep going back to like that knowing of like, God, am I supposed to keep going? Cause yes. this is not, is my gut wrong? Right. <laughs> right. Because every time you keep getting knocked down and you keep getting rejected, it is so hard is. to trust yourself when you yeah. feel like it's what you're supposed to be doing. And so it was three years of that for me. Um, and I just had to learn everything I could about the beauty space, which I didn't know anything about it going into it. I'm so glad that you shared that with the audience because you are absolutely right that what so many people just see is, you know, the highlight reel that they're going to find on Google and they don't see that three years of just kind of the drudgery and just the one step in front of another. And I know that um, you do have a new book out, by the way, which we're going to tell our listeners at the end um, where they can get that. And But I know you talk in the book about rejection. I'm sure there was also a part of you that was like second guessing, like, did I actually hear from God? Because um, what my community knows, I always say, if you know when you're knower. <laughs> so I love that you were talking about the knowing because I always talk about knowing in my knower. But you knew when you're knower, but probably when you're getting no after no after no, you're also starting to question like, well, maybe I was crazy. Mrs. Maybe this was a dumb idea. Maybe I didn't know after all. And so was that, you know, your reality for a little while as well? Yeah, I mean, it's really hard. I mean, I went through this this big kind of journey of, figuring out how to actually hear myself because, you know, I think what's really hard is we, and I think this is universal. I think we all hear self-doubt in our own head that gets really loud, our inner critic. And then all of a sudden um, I was layered with, with lack of success, lack of proof that my idea was going to work. And when we're not getting traction in our own business or when we're not getting the kind of traction in our online community or in the content we're putting out or in, you know, the paintings we're creating or it's, it's so that lack of, of, of proof or lack of traction in our business that to me, that's a whole nother layer that makes us then second guess trusting ourselves. And if our gut is right. Um, And then, you know, another thing, I think this is also, Oh gosh, I wish people, I talk a lot about this in the book because I'm realizing people need to share this more, but a lot of us have friends or family around us that love us and that mean well, Mm -hmm. um, if we're blessed to have that, but yet they actually can't 
they can't see, they think we're crazy for launching yep, a business. They sure do. <laughs> right? <laughs> they don't understand our vision. They're seeing everything through the lens of their own self-doubt yes. or their own experiences. Yes. And so you have the noise of all that around you, of, of yeah. often people that they unknowingly just want you to stay in your comfort zone and not go after your dream. They want you to yeah. go back to the job that's safe or whatever. So, so you have the, the circle around you that loves you, but then is speaking the stuff into yes. you that's making you second guess it. You have lack of traction in your own business. Uh, uh, I have my own self-doubt. And then I layered on top of this, and, and maybe so many people in your community will, will connect with this too, but I made the mistake often and I would have to check myself. And I talk about my best friend, Natasha, in this book, who's one of the most amazing prayer warriors, yeah. which she would, she would remind me of this. I made this mistake of putting these experts who I valued on a pedestal, meaning I love the department. Like, like when I was a Denny's waitress, I would save my tip money to buy a Mac lipstick or a Lancome yes. eyeliner in these department yeah. stores. And, and I love Sephora and Ulta and QVC. Yeah. And I yeah. put them on a pedestal, right? And when they were telling me no, and my idea is not going to work, or they don't yeah. believe in my vision, or I need to change mm-hmm. my packaging or not use real women as models, right. and all the stuff that they told me. I had to learn to put God on a pedestal, my own gut on a pedestal over yes. these experts. And oh, all of that yeah. combined <laughs> to me, and it's funny because yes, it cosmetics now is the largest makeup company in the country. Yes, all those yes. things. But to yeah. me, that's not the victory. To me, the victory is no matter the outcome, the victory that we're all on is are we able to turn down the volume Mm-hmm. on our own self-doubt and our own yes. inner critic? Are we able to love our friends and family from a distance, but maybe not let them kind of like <laughs> speak Influence into our all lives? The things. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Can we put, you know, our own intuition or God on a pedestal yeah. instead of, you know, uh, people that don't believe in us? Mm-hmm. And can we learn to trust ourselves? And like, I've made so many mistakes building it cosmetics and, and, and just in my life in general. And I share all of those in the book too, um, for the first time ever. But the one thing that I did right when I look back on everything is in so many critical moments when it didn't make sense in my head, I made the decision to trust that knowing to, to, and to trust myself and go with it. Um, and, and that when we do that, cause I believe we all have that like yes. you say, know your knower. I believe yep. we all know your knower. That. And I yeah. think it's always right. And I yeah. think the journey in life is learning to trust it. Yeah. Um, in order well, it to sound, become it the person sounds like your book and my book are almost like sisters. Um, and I match <laughs> my book right now. I match your book. You are totally on brand for me. Absolutely. If you guys are watching <laughs> on it. YouTube, you're sitting <laughs> doing in the hot thing. So I love it. Okay. So then how did the whole thing happen with like, you know, um, it's cosmetics getting bought out by L'Oreal and, oh, and now yeah. it's like mega, like tell, tell our listeners, like, I mean, yeah. obviously that didn't happen overnight right. and there was a season of planting, you know, seeds and where you really weren't reaping a harvest. And now obviously you're yes. in the whole harvest stage, but what did that, what did that look like? Yeah. So, you know, it really, so after three years of all these no's, um, we got down to under a thousand dollars in our bank account, which was our personal and our company combined. And, uh, it was actually, I rarely ever share the story. I share it in the book, but, um, I love that you talk about faith and mm-hmm. I love sharing the real yeah. story behind the story with you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I hope it's okay to share this. this yeah. Oh, absolutely. But... You, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so after three years of no's, I was at this big beauty expo in New York city and there was, uh, it happens once a year and there are 6,000 women that walk the floor, all of them are in the beauty industry. Mm-hmm. And they're all of the big brands that are in department stores that sure. uh, their big product launches of the year, they demonstrate them all. So, so there's, I don't know, a thousand being demonstrated Mm -hmm. and you enter and it's this big award show and you enter and you sit there in this three foot booth. So I entered our Bye Bye Under Eye Concealer, even though no one had heard of us. And I'm standing there in my three foot booth. And the hope is that when all these women are walking by, the hope is that they actually test your product and then vote for it because they okay. do these big awards. And, sure. uh, and if you win one, the hope is you get picked up in retail stores or you, you know, all they get more press for your product, uh-huh. all the things. So I'm standing there in between Mac and Lancome, you know, all the yes. L'Oreal, all the most beautiful brands yes. 
out there that I love and I'm there with it cosmetics. And <laughs> so it was the crazy experience and, and women are coming by and coming. Out. Now keep in mind, I've had three years of rejections yeah. and haven't been able to get like a big break. And I noticed while well, you're not allowed to leave your three foot table as I'm standing there, uh, I noticed, oh my gosh, QVC has this huge booth in the background. I've only had phone call rejections from them over and over, but what if I go up in person and I meet the buyer? And so I'm standing there. I, I'm embarrassed to admit this. I wish I could say I was present and paying attention to everyone stopping yeah. by. I mean, I was super gracious and they'd stop by and I'd show my product and I'd be talking uh, and engaging, but my head was in another place. All I could think about was how can I get to that QVC booth? So I'm not even paying attention to who's walking by. Yeah. Okay. I, I kept like sneaking off trying to, and then I would come back because I'd see the buyers were busy over at the booth. I eventually got made my way over to QVC booth, introduced myself, like prayed for the right words to say, poured yes. my heart out, yep. felt sweat dripping down my, all right. the things. And the buyer was really nice. She gave me her card, said, let's, let's meet sometime. I walked back over to my table um, and I didn't know if she meant it, right? Yeah. Sometimes like people say like, oh, let's, you know, have a meeting and you just don't know. You threw you off a little, so, yes. Yeah, and so I'm like, okay, okay. So I'm processing what happened and I keep demonstrating to all the women walking by. About an hour later, a woman comes up to me and she introduces herself. She says, hello, my name is Miss Lisa Mason. I'm a QVC show host. And she goes, I had tried your product earlier with you. And I just realized, oh my gosh, I didn't even realize she was, I was talking to her earlier because my head was somewhere else. Oh, Thank yes. goodness I love every, you know, I love everybody. So I, yeah. and she goes, I want to tell you something. She goes, I think that our QVC gals at home, she says, I'm a QVC show host. She says, I think our QVC gals at home would love this concealer. And I want you to know, I just, I just told our buyer that, that I, I believe that. And I think we should, we should oh, launch fabulous. a concealer. And I look at her and literally tears start streaming down my face. And then I think I freaked her out because she's like, oh, oh, sugar, I have no say over if this is <laughs> she's like, <laughs> she goes, I just want to let you know, like, I, I think this product's great. Okay. So fast forward, we get a meeting with QVC yeah. um, and we got a yes. And here's the thing, Jennifer, and for all, all of your business owners that are, that are part of your community, you know, there's a famous saying, never accept a purchase order you can't afford to lose if it's consignment right? Okay. And QVC beauty is consignment. And so for me, what that meant was, okay, Jamie, you got one shot in a mm -hmm. 10 minute window live to sell your products yep. on QVC. You're going to get a shot. Well, Jennifer, we were only, so we, we were three years into the business and we were only selling right. two to three orders a day on our website and barely staying right. alive. And I learned we had to uh, we had to sell over six thousand units of our concealer That's what I was in the say. yeah yeah in this ten minute window right to hit their sales goal or not come back and it was consignment so it meant we had to figure out how to pay for the inventory make it ship it in do all the legal and regulatory compliance and then if I went on air and it didn't sell. You're we would have to take it all back and we'd be bankrupt. We'd be out of business. And yeah. so we, you know, applied for SBA loans and it was uh, 22 banks said no, which they should have, honestly. And the 23rd bank said, yes, we got enough money just to fund that inventory. Oh, Jamie, um, what a story God's done in your life, man. 22 it's notes. Scary. Well, here's the thing is, you know, what I didn't know was in this moment, launching on a QVC, it was going to mm -hmm. change everything. It's, and in this moment, this lesson I learned um, that I'm about to share is why I believe L'Oreal bought our business for $1.2 billion. Yes. And here's what I mean by that. When we said yes to QVC and we had this one shot in 10 minutes, mm -hmm. um, we uh, agreed to it and we hired third-party consultants. And by the way, let me just say this. There's so many experts that have given me advice that has been so phenomenal and such a blessing. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's been a lot of experts who haven't. And the way I decipher that again, as you said it best, like you, you know, you're knower, right? You just yeah, know, no. does this yep. feel right? Yep. Uh, so we hired third party consultants who help a lot of people sell on TV and in stores. Yes. And here's the big thing. So I created this company, not just to have products that work 
you know, for all skin types. But I also had this bigger vision, which was to try and shift culture and beauty and to try and use models that are real women every age. And Thank you. Skin, <laughs> yes. Right? And skin right. challenge. And yeah. It, because I realized growing up, I loved all those beauty ads and I aspired to look like them. But as a little girl, they always kind of made me feel like I wasn't enough. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when I created it cosmetics, I thought, and this was pre YouTube, I thought, how can I um, use real women as models? You, you know, all the things to yeah. try and yeah. to ship and call them beautiful and mean it to try and shift culture yes. around beauty and the beauty industry, like for every little girl out there who's about to see these ads and start doubting herself and, and every grown woman who still does. So I, I um, knew I wanted to do that. So here, so here's the thing. I'm sitting there meeting with these third-party consultants. They're all telling me the same thing. If you want to have a shot for success and you're one shot, here's the kind of models you have to use. And they were all like, yep. I don't know, I want to say 12, but let me just say 18, yep. uh, 20, early 20s with perfect skin. Barbie I'm like, looking, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, but here's the thing. Like I created this product for like, what if, and I, I brought this idea of what if I take my makeup off and show my bright red rosacea so I can yes. prove live on QVC. That's what you ended up doing? Because I don't even know this story. Yes. I said, oh. well, here's the thing. They told me I was crazy. They said, no, no, no. Like, and we, we would argue. And I said, listen, if I'm, and this is, and I know, I know, I know that um, your community will understand this just from all the stuff you teach them. But it's like, when we know who our customer is and we can put ourselves in her shoes, yes. I'd say to them, if I'm a woman sitting at home, and I'm watching some product on TV. How do I know it's going to work for me if I don't see someone that looks like me, right? Yes. And I right. And I said, so what if I take my makeup off and just show, prove it live? It's not some Photoshop yeah. ad. Let me prove it live how it works. And what if I put models? You know, I mean, our most popular models, yes. Helen in her seventies. Uh, we have Alicia with acne prone skin, Des with under eye darkness. Like, what if I put real people? And they thought I was crazy, and we would argue about it. And they wanted me to win these consultants yeah. so okay I'm almost done with the story I promise so yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to share it's like the grand story in yeah. case anyone can really relate to this or just needs to hear this today yes. because so many times people will tell us our vision isn't right or we're not enough or we're not yeah. the right fit and that's what happened to me over and over and so fast forward we have our one big shot on QVC yeah. and I was freaking out. I flew out to Pennsylvania um, a week early, a week before our airing. And I sat in this rental car in the parking lot all alone, (laughs) praying, crying, singing I Surrender All because I heard Oprah say she does that. Um, I was just like, God, take this from me. It's too heavy. Whatever works. Right. And I was sitting there in the car watching the front door of the huge QVC campus, but the front door knowing like the next time I walk in there, I'm either going to walk out bankrupt or right. my whole life is going to change in this whole new direction. And, yes. uh, but also I second guessed myself in that car and I thought things like, okay, if I do it, maybe I'll do it their way to start. And, and then after I get success, I'll do it the way that's authentic to my brand and put real women. Mm-hmm. I had all these thoughts, mm-hmm. but I also know you can't fake authenticity. Like you can't, can't, right? And the only way people, the reason so many people connect with you is because you freaking show up fully authentically, right? So people are able to connect. And it's like, I knew that. I knew that to be true. So I stopped, but but sometimes we know something, but when our our values or our knowing is challenged, it's hard when we're feeling all this pressure. Um, And I'll never forget this moment in the car um, where where I would imagine like, who is that customer? Who is that woman sitting there? And I was like, okay, if, if somebody is flipping the channel and they're going to see me live on TV and I'm blessed with five seconds of their time, what do I want to stand for? Even if they buy nothing. Right. And I would imagine like this single mom in Nebraska, I don't know why folding laundry who like was too busy to remember she mattered and that she's beautiful. And I just remember this moment, this knowing in the car, I was like, I'd rather have her turn on her screen see women that look like her, yes. see me calling the beautiful and meaning it and have her not buy anything. I'd rather have her be rem- reminded that she's beautiful yes. and that she matters than sell a crap load of product and stand for nothing. And I knew, I knew what I had to do, but I also didn't know what was going to happen. And it was, I walked into the QVC building. And by the way, the reason I'm sharing this story is I think 
I think these are the moments that change our lives. They do. Mm-hmm. Right. When we follow our, our knowing. And I walked into the QVC building for that 10 minute window. And like Jennifer, I remember on the floors, this big countdown clock. And I was about to go live to a hundred million homes. So QVC is broadcast live. Um, I, I, for anyone that doesn't know, it's a yeah, TV channel live to a hundred million homes. There's no script, no teleprompter. A hundred million. <laughs> a hundred million homes. I and I remember Facebook like, live on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. And, oh, wow. and oh my gosh, I, I just remember the moment the host, um, they paired me. Oh, I have to wrap that story up for you too. Sorry. I'm all over this. No, you're the, fine. The, the host, Lisa Mason, who came up to me at that beauty show, who said, I love your product, but they paired me with her for the launch. And I have to tell you one thing about her in a second, but anyways, yeah. it was only the second time I'd ever seen her. Now I was about to go live on TV in front of a hundred million homes. And uh, and so I remember the big 10 minute clock and I remember being in the big studio and all of a sudden we were live. And I learned shortly before that, that you're not guaranteed those 10 minutes. If you're like a minute or two into selling and it's not doing well, your time will get cut live. It could go boom down to two minutes. Right. And, but you can't try to sell or nothing sells. And so it was just like, okay, God. <laughs> and I remember I had double spanks on. And I remember the um, sweat was <laughs> dripping, right? The sweat Double was like, spank. you are my people, Jamie. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, but I had to, if, the second I started thinking about myself, like, is my dress too tight? All that, all that crap. I was like, oh, I'm going to be done. I have to make it about her at home. Yeah. And I remember the light went on and I was trying to do this demonstration and my hand was shaking so much that the host grabbed it. And she was like, thank you, sugar. And she pushed it under the podium. And I, and she took over like a pro. And then I remember my bright red face on national television, the moment that happened, my bare face um, before shot. And we walked over to all the different women of different ages and sizes and skin challenges and skin tones. And there was about a minute left in the presentation. Uh And I remember the host was like, the tan shade's almost sold out. The deep shade is gone. I'm like, (gasps) and I remember the 10 minute mark hit and this big sold out sign came up across the screen. and I start sobbing on national. Oh. I was like, and uh, and my husband came running through the double doors, and he's like, you know, and I'm like, real women have spoken, and I'm like crying. And <laughs> I love it. You're making like, me cry. Oh, and he's like, we're not going bankrupt. <laughs> and that one airing, Jennifer, that one airing that was ten minutes, it turned into five that year, and then 101 the next year, and then I ended up doing. Uh, 250 live shows a year on QVC for eight years. And uh, we built the biggest beauty brand in QVC's history. So it is right now at this moment. And the only reason I share that is just, it was three years of, of hearing no, even by QVC, but by everybody, but, yeah. and you're not the right fit. And it's like, no one can tell you you're not the right fit. And had I listened to those no's over my own gut and listen, sometimes a no is right. And it's a yeah. blessing, right? Yeah. And like, and, and, and two quick final thoughts. Sorry, I'm talking so much, um, okay, <laughs> but um, just on the God thing, I just want to share something. Um, one of the things I talk about in the book is not just self-doubt and body doubt and all the stuff that I've gone through in my life, but also God doubt. And uh, I share a big lesson in the book. I learned on how to, I went through a season of God doubt that lasted a number of years. And, and someone gave me the advice of, if you doubt God, tell him, tell him you doubt him and ask him to prove you wrong. I was like, huh. right. And so I started doing that. And when I started doing that, it took a few years, but like he did. And um, yeah. And so just to add one more quick thing for anyone going through God doubt right now, like that's a big lesson I learned is, is ask him to, to, yeah. Tell him you doubt him, ask him to prove you wrong. Anyways, um, so after we launched on QVC, that host, Lisa Mason, yeah. uh, she had been there 17 years and she retired and like all that. And so fast forward, and I hadn't talked to her in a long time and fast forward several years, we became the biggest brand at QVC. And I was like, I've got to thank her for loving our concealer. And I called her one day and I said, I just want to thank you. You know, you, you loving our product that day changed my life. Yes. And I'll never forget what she said, Jennifer. She said to me, honey, I'm really proud of you. And I do love your product. I wear it every day, but that's not why I went up to you at that beauty show. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, I was walking the floor that day with thousands of women. And God told me, go up to that young girl and help her. Wow. And she goes, all I did was listen. And I'm oh, like, it made me cry. I, I literally, I, I, I still can't even 
believe those words. And anyways, just to share that piece, I never talk about this by the way, but just to share. I will love that. And it's so encouraging just because I'm constantly telling the women I coach that you never know who or what is on the other side of your obedience. You know, Mm. and God told her to go talk to you and then look what's happened. And God told you, keep going. Now we're going to both cry. Just like a bunch of knuckleheads over here. So, (laughs) uh, and I love, uh, before we came live, you were telling me that you've actually had a chance um, to partner with Victoria Olstein on something too. Too, right at their church. Yeah. I mean, how cool is that? And so look what God yeah. has done. This is amazing. Okay. So yeah. all these stories. I, and I think it's a God moment and a God sized dream being here with you. So thank oh, you. Thank that. you. Just you're blessing my socks off. So tell me about your book. The name of the book is yeah. Believe It, which yes. is, you know, a play off of it cosmetics. So yeah. what can women expect to hear about in the book? I mean, obviously some of the stories you've shared here, but way more in depth yeah. 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 So believe it, you know, I um, poured every single word into this book, as you know, that process. And it's yes. really, uh, believe it is really for anybody who wants to, who's dealing with self-doubt, like who knows deep down inside they're made for more, they're created for more, but still doubts themselves anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, you know, for me, yes, I talk about like, even at a granular level, everything I did from, from, uh, you know, dealing with all the rejections, building a toolbox on how to handle them and be resilient and building a, a, a company with over a thousand employees and going through the acquisition process to L'Oreal and selling it for a billion dollars. I talk about all that stuff, but really what this book really is, is, is my story of a girl going from not believing in herself to learning how to believe in herself and, yeah. and doubting she's enough to knowing she's enough. And And really learning how to get still and and hear my own voice and trust it, hear that inner knowing and trust it. And, you know, I really wrote it because, you know, it's not, I know that it's not just my story. I know it's a story of so many other people out there, like right now, who are on their own journey of learning how to believe in themselves and trust themselves and and know they're enough. And so, um, yeah, it's called Believe It. And uh, I just... I'm donating 100% of the proceeds and my author royalties from it uh, to feed I know, when America. You told me that, I'm like, rising. what? Okay, who are you donating the proceeds of the book? Well, first of all, when does the book yeah. come out? It comes out. So February 23rd. Yeah, February, February 23rd. So this yes. is such a big celebration time right now. Um, yes. And there's lots of free gifts we're doing just for the yes. big celebration. Tell the ladies, where would you prefer they go buy it? And let me just tell you that I have the coolest audience ever. Jamie, like when I tell them, like, ladies, you're going to love this. Go buy that. They they show up for me and they're going to show up for you. So I, I love the community that we have. Um, I've also explained to them how important book orders are to authors. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? That even if like, you're like, I'm in a season of life where I don't have any time to read the book, pick it up anyway. Maybe you'll get a chance in a couple of years. But I, I so where can they get the book and then tell them where all the proceeds from the book are going while yeah. I blow my nose because you made me cry. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, so you can pick it up anywhere books are sold. And uh, uh, from indie bookstores to Target and Amazon and Barnes and Noble, um, all the retailers are on believeit.com. And so the book's called Believe It. And um, 100% of the proceeds and 100% of my author royalties are going to uh, Feeding America and Together Rising. And on believeit.com, the only reason I bring that site up, so the book's called Believe It. And believeit.com is where we're giving all the free gifts. Uh, Uh So if you grab the book anywhere um, and you go to believeit.com just for the big celebration of the launch and and the week after the launch. What what do you have going for free gifts? Because that is brilliant and I should have done that. (laughs) Oh, well, you know, I um, I did, so I uh, wrote this, it's a 95 page action plan on really like how to implement all the lessons from the book into your real life. Yeah. Um, and so that's free uh, for any, we're doing it just for the big celebration for the week. Okay. And then I, I also filmed a course uh, called Becoming Unstoppable, How to Overcome the Things Holding You Back. And that's free also just for the, the book launch. Um, and then both of those are going away. I'm never selling either of them. They're just something I did to promote the, just to give for free to promote uh, the big celebration of the book launch of Believe It. Awesome. Okay, so they need to go to believeit.com to yes. take advantage of all of those. And then, Jamie, where do you love to be on social media? Like, if my people want to go follow on you. Your wanna... yes. <laughs> <laughs> on your page. On your page. Thank um, you. I, I'm in Instagram the most, I think. That's of, what I thought. Yeah, on Instagram yeah. at Jamie Kern Lima. 
Yeah. yeah. You are just fabulous. And this was such a gift. And when my team's like, Hey, um, Jamie wants to know if she can be on your podcast. I'm like, how does Jamie even know who I am? And so I was so honored and this has been mm-hmm. so much fun. And I just, I love everything you're doing. I love just watching how God has blessed your life and blessed your business. And then how you in turn are blessing other people. And um, so thank you for modeling that really well for those of thank us who are you. watching. Closely. Well, I think you see that because you are that, do you know what I mean? So thank you. And I am grateful. Yeah, I really tried to get on your show because I love your, I love how you're blessing so many women, so many business owners, so many people with big dreams. And yeah. I'm just I'm inspired by it. And so, yeah, I, I was like, oh. So well, anyway. yes, you and I both know. I mean, you're to a completely different degree, but when a woman changes her mind, she can change her business and that can change her life and everybody around her. So that's why I love, you know, business so much for that reason. And so thank you for being here. Bless you. you. I am going to go order my copy at believeit.com. And I, listeners, I want you to do the same. Go give Jamie some love on her Instagram. Make sure you're following her there. And I would just love for you to show up and, um, and just support her in terms of buying her book. And of course, all those... Um, Uh, proceeds from the book are going to those two organizations. So Jamie, bless you, girl. I can't wait to meet you someday in real life. Yes, me too. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer.